Dylan White to respect him. So, hmm. After five and a half minutes, his hands got really low. And the fast start had him tired. He was taking deep breaths, less than two rounds in. Him and White were getting, at, you know, they were doing work, getting after it. And, you know, he clearly, visibly got a little bit tired in there. <clears throat> His mouth was open. And, you know, eventually he put Dylan White away. It was a workman performance going, uh, you know, later on in the fight. But, you know, he spent some a lot of energy... And we got to see the, the, the limits of his physical conditioning at that particular point in this fight. So I want to say that that might have been the, the roughest fight that he's had, actually. Dylan White, I want to say, gave him the best fight he's had. And both guys were throwing power shots. Both guys were trying to get each other out of there. <clears throat> so... AJ did a great job in there. You know, every every young fighter has that guy that they just don't like. And I guess Dylan White was that guy. Now, fast forwarding, <clears throat> fast forwarding up to the Eric Molina fight. <coughs> Eric Molina gave Anthony Joshua some problems. And re-watching the Eric Molina-AJ fight, AJ really came in there, and his hand placement was great. Now, he's got a little rhythm in that Eric Molina fight that I had never seen him use before, where he's got his hands up, and he's like this. He's like that. He, you know, maybe a guy could time him on that, but I, I want to say that's clearly him reminding himself to keep his hands up. And... I think I only seen him throw one punch where his other hand was low, but other than that, his hand placement was great. And if he looks like he does in the Eric Molina fight, um, from here on out, he's a good fighter. But his his uh, he's constantly adding pieces to his game, and you've seen that. You know, every other fight, you see a new defensive move. Every other fight, you would see a new combination. Every other fight, you would see something that he was adding in, in, in training camp that made him a more complete fighter. So, you know, and then he finally got the hand placement thing fixed. So, right now, he's the best heavyweight in the world, bar none, Wilder included. Wilder, I think, has regressed in the last year and a half, two years. That's just my personal opinion. So, <clears throat> seeing Anthony Joshua improve like this, he's adding dimensions to his game. And coming up uh, against Vladimir Klitschko, he should win that fight uh, pretty, pretty decisively. I mean, pretty, I don't want to say easily, because Vladimir's a legend, but... Vladimir had a problem with Povechkin throwing shots at him. And if you got problems with Povechkin throwing shots at you, Anthony Joshua is at least a level above Povechkin at this point. With that hand placement being the way it is and with him adding stuff every training camp and with him already knowing distance, that fight should be a landslide. And it's going to be sad to see Vladimir go out like that. But hey, at least he's making money and there's going to be 90,000 people at the stadium that day. So those are my thoughts on Anthony Joshua. Best heavyweight in the world. Should be for a while. It's going to be great to watch him. So, <clears throat> you know, once again, thanks everyone for showing me the support. And thank you for... Uh, for continuing to view my channel. Let me know what other fighters you want me to go over in the comment section. If you want me to do another profile, I will, you know, answer you within 24 hours. If you post up a comment, I'm pretty good about that. So let me know. Holler at your boy. This is Lefty.
And uh, if you're into baseball, I am doing a video on the World Baseball Classic tonight, if not in the next 24 hours. So this is Lefty. Lefty's out. Peace.